when I stimulate anything on this side, this muscle should work. work, should work. When I stimulate anything on this side, this muscle should not work. So if I tap here and test this muscle, push up, that's normal. If I test here and push this muscle, go. That's also normal. Push up. That's normal. That's normal. Whether you're switching the upper torso, doctor only pull. Ooh, I don't like that at all. Go. I don't like that. That's not normal. We haven't looked at his neck yet. Not going to push. That is normal. Let's triple check this. Go. All right, that's not normal. So in our cross cord reflexes, when we do a Babinski's test here, it should facilitate this quad. It should also facilitate the contralateral pec. When I stimulate here, we should turn on this through our monosynaptic reflex arc, but we also have cross cord reflexes. So the facilitation here causes inhibition here. Then facilitation here causes facilitation of the contralateral pec, but also inhibition of the ipsilateral pec. So in this test, what we're doing is we're doing a Babinski's or plantar reflex. He should have strength in this pec. Don't let me pull. And he does not. So now we're going to try to find out why he doesn't have strength in that test. All right, so we're challenging the C1, and we're going to see what impact that has. And we're going to go back and do that stimulation on his foot, and then we're going to check his pec. Don't let me pull. And that did not make a change. We're going to just double check it to be safe. Don't let me pull. That did not make a change. Now we're going to go to his C7 on the left. Significant difference. Let's double check it. Go. So we're going to adjust the C7 on the left. For those of you who are watching, there's three types of, three or four types of adjustments you can do to the cervical spine. We can do a rotational adjustment, which is here. We can do a lateral break, which is also an uncoupled adjustment, difficult to test from this show from this angle. It's where you come here and push through the uh, transverse process. However, we're going to do a coupled adjustment, also known as a modified modified, by using our thrusting on the uh, spinous process. I can't show it from this angle, so. Do you want warm? Yeah. Doctor, can we feel his hands? Are they a little sweaty? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. More so excited. So when a patient's been out for a long time, you make that adjustment. They're not sure going. Doctor, don't want So that's rock solid. Now we're going to do ipsilateral palm testing. So we should have strength. We do. We should have weakness. We do. We should have strength. We do. We should have weakness. And we do. So that was bottom to top, top to top. Now we're going to top to bottom. Push up. We should have inhibition. We do. We should have facilitation. Ooh, we don't. <coughs> Again, facilitation, we don't. It tells us his hand or shoulder or something else and his neck is out. Push up, we should have inhibition, we do. We should have facilitation, and we don't. Again, okay, and that was 
again back. We're going to look at his neck again for something else. So we did a C7 on the left. We're going to do a challenge of C7 on the right. And we're going to go back and retest those reflexes. We should have facilitation. We do. We should have facilitation. Then we do. I want to just double check it because I'm a fanatic about things like that. Good. Okay. We're going to do a C7 coupled adjustment on the right as well. To diminish the impact of this on his brain neurologically, we're going to have him make a left fist to stimulate his left cerebellum. Remember, I'm about to adjust his right side, which will stimulate his right cerebellum. I don't want to stimulate his right cerebellum, but when I make the adjustment, I will. So to blunt that neurological force, we're going to have him stimulate his left side. We're also going to have him look to the left. You can keep your eyes open or closed. I just want you to look left. You look left, Doc. You make that left fist. You keep your eyes closed. Right. All right, you rest. You can relax that too. Hmm. Tell us stuff that goes into making an adjustment. Push up. That, how's that feel, Doc? Good. Yeah. I'm going to have you sit in that. Of course, the first time, yeah? Yeah, first time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Don't you pull? We're going to make a challenge on the sick room. Don't you pull? Doc, try that again. Go. I don't like that at all. We're going to look at it L5. Doc, try again. I don't like that. All right, let's start from the top. He has a left cerebellum right brain issue. With the right brain, you have a ilium that happens. Doc, try again. Okay, that's a big difference. Again, All right, that's what you're ilium on the same side, left. No, right. So here's what happens. When your brain starts to have diminished output, the front anterior portion starts to increase in its tone, and the everything above T6 on the front increases tone, and everything posterior on the posterior side above T6 on the ipsilateral side decreases tone and then it reverses in the lower body. So what happens is, just to keep it simple, when you have a decreased output from the right brain, the right hip starts to go like this. So our goal is to take that alien and shift it forward. So we did a challenge. If we were to do this adjustment on him, and we come back and we check his hamstrings, go. I like that a lot. Go. And I like that. Now let's pretend we were going to adjust him in a different direction. Let's say we were going to do a sacrum and check his strength. Go down. So he has no strength whatsoever. Again, there's nothing there. So that is not the direction we're going to adjust him. Doc, you're going to relax for a little bit. This is and for everybody at home, we're going to speed up this portion of the video. I was gonna fall asleep there, man. That's okay, you're supposed to. I.e., it's called de stress and pain reduction center for a reason. <laughs> I won't be full, I'm here.